last the first question of the evening. Jody? Based on the results of our recent News 8, the Hill Emerson College polling, the first question of the evening will go to Themis Claritas. Inflation and global demand is making the costs of goods and services more expensive here and around the world. What kind of proposal could you as a U.S. Senator promote to help Connecticut residents? Thank you, Jody, and thank you, Channel 8, for doing this. It is very clear that we are in a very bad economic situation. We have 9.1% inflation. We have borders that are a mess and fentanyl flooding our streets. And we have crime that's out of control from the defunding of the police, all given to us by Joe Biden and Dick Blumenthal and the radical left. What we need to do is make sure that we are making this country affordable for the people of Connecticut and the people of this country. We need to make the tax cuts permanent. We need to lower tax rates for individuals, give them relief. We need to freeze domestic spending. To do so, we have to make sure our regulation, instead of strangulating the economy like it is now, is modern and effective, and make sure we wrap that all together in a balanced budget so we can make sure that inflation goes down and growth goes up. Mrs. Levy, you have a minute to answer this question. Our economy is in shambles. It's a result of the terrible failed policies of Joe Biden, rubber stamped by Blumenthal. There's inflation caused by the trillions of dollars of wasteful spending. There, there are the highest gas prices in 40 years. We must stop the spending. We must also reignite American energy independence to alleviate the shortage that is causing the high gas prices. We must absolutely support our businesses so that they can increase production. We must bring production back from China and other countries to alleviate the supply chain problems. For goodness sakes, parents can't even find baby formula. But it's interesting that my opponent mentioned lowering taxes when Connecticut just experienced a 23% increase in the diesel tax that she voted for when she was in office. It increases the price of every good and service they, they purchase. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Mr. Lamage. Um, thank you very much for having us. First, I want to thank this little uh, guy who gave me a card from John Paul II that says, uh, be not afraid, and his name is Billy. And there are two other people who are in the green room that uh, are celebrating their anniversary tonight. It's Mike Meadows and his wife, and I appreciate that they drove from uh, Sprague to come here and support us. So I appreciate their uh, uh, support. Look, to understand, uh, to fix the economy, one must understand that without understanding inflation, currency depreciation, the Federal Reserve, you cannot fix the economy. What causes inflation is both monetary and fiscal. When Milton Friedman told us that uh, inflation is monetary, he was right at that time. But at that time, we had a closed economy, we had a, a fixed exchange rate. It was a different uh, situation. What causes inflation now is both monetary and fiscal. Monetary is the Federal Reserve that should be brought in within the confines of its original intent. And then fiscal is uh, the scope and reach of government and spending. Inflation is by design by the government to prevent you and I from creating wealth and equity, which is a God-given right. And that's where the United States Senate comes in. We shape the president's agenda by consenting and advising the president on the nominations when it comes to the Federal Reserve, uh, Supreme Court nominations, the Federal Reserve, as I said. Uh, we deal with, uh, you know, other issues such as international treaties. And this is where you need a true conservative who is not afraid to be uh, uh, a conservative to fight for these principles. So understanding these issues properly would be what qualifies someone to be in the United States Senate. Thank you very much. All right, our next question, Mrs. Levy, you're going to get this one first. Connecticut yeah. ranks very low in affordability, especially for minority families. What will you specifically do to make home ownership more affordable for all residents, including people of color? You have 60 seconds. Yes. Connecticut is unaffordable for all residents of Connecticut. We are one of the only states, in fact, I think we're the only state that hasn't recovered the jobs lost in the 2008 recession. In order to make homes more affordable, we need to make Connecticut more affordable. And, and by raising the diesel tax 23% and with the, the high taxes on, on almost everything that we buy in general, 
that makes it very difficult for people. We need to bring jobs to Connecticut. We, we need to attract business here. Government, Le, Governor Lamont wants to attract business here by creating a sanctuary state for abortion, which my opponent supports. Um, I say we bring business here by make, making a friendly business climate, reducing the corporate taxes, making it affordable, reduce the regulations. We are among the most regulated states in the country, Thank and you. that's what will help make life affordable here. Thank you. Mr. Lamage, you have 60 seconds. Um, first, we have to understand the root of the problem. What causes the problem in our state is the failed liberal policies implemented in Hartford and Washington. So those policies must be dismantled. Uh, when it comes to uh, making it uh, affordable for um, the residents to live in our state, let's uh, deal with the taxes for it, the regulations, job creation. People should be able to get a job. You go into the cities, you drive from Fairfield to Bridgeport and you see the disaster that they created in these cities. You go to Hartford. Eight years ago, Hartford was one of the richest cities in the United States. States. Yet, in eight years, the Democrats have turned that into the poorest city, one of the poorest cities in the United States. So we're going to have to uproot the problem first and understand that the failed liberal policies are causing these failures. And therefore, as Republicans, we should be able to identify those policies and make sure that we defeat them once and for all so that anyone and everyone can afford to live in our state. Thank you. Ms. Claritas, you have 60 seconds. Thank you. I know firsthand what the liberal Democrat policies in Connecticut have done. I have served 22 years in the state legislature. I'm the only candidate here that has ever been elected to office. I fought in the trenches for the people of Connecticut. Um, and when we talk about the diesel tax that my opponent mentioned, she's referring to 2007 when the minority party in Connecticut, the Republicans, with me as deputy leader, wrote our own budget to make sure we didn't have tax increases in Connecticut. And that diesel tax changed the formula that lowered the diesel tax for many years until now when Governor Lamont increased the diesel tax. But I will tell you this, make housing more affordable, make food more affordable, make gas more affordable. The way you do that is by having a more affordable state. And I was proud in 2017 to pass the first minority party budget in the United States of America with me as leader for the House and Senate Republicans that gave us a bonding cap, a spending cap, and a volatility cap. So when you hear the Democrats talk about how flush our rainy day fund is, you can thank a Republican every time you hear that. Mrs. Levy, I know you laughed during that answer. Do you have a rebuttal to that? Oh, I wasn't laughing. Well, you, you were smiling, so I thought uh, you might want to comment on that, on what she had to say. No? All right. I'm okay. smiling. All right. Jerry.